We played the game of stay away, but it costs more than I can pay. Without you, I can't make my way. I surrender, dear. I may seem proud. I may act gay. The setting is Broadway in New York. The author is one of America's greatest storytellers, Damon Runyon. His Broadway stories of gangsters, dancers, and bookmakers are famous. This is Famous Stories. I am John Henderson. Coming up, we will hear the story, The Bloodhounds of Broadway, from the Golden Age of Radio. But first, let us take a look at another version of the same story. In 1952, they made a movie starring Scott Brady, who had just had a major part in a pirate adventure movie, and Mitzi Gaynor, who would go on to star in the musical South Pacific. The movie was titled Damon Runyon's Bloodhounds of Broadway. Give me a number. Oh, numbers not that again. Come on, fast, fast. 12 times 28. 336. 26 times 85. 2,210. 52 times... No... That ain't healthy. You shouldn't strain your head like that. Why not? It relaxes me. Numbers? We're out of gas. Where are we? Georgia. How'd we get here? Don't blame me. I didn't want to drive. I don't know if I'm driving. How'd it do? Uh, It so happened we run out of gas on the road here. And I thought maybe you would... You might help us find some. Y'all ain't been around these parts much, you don't reckon? Never. I'm Emily Ann Stackley. Who you all? Uh, Smith, and he's Jones. Well, I'm mighty proud to make your acquaintance. And I'd be most honored to help. Little girl, um, tell me something. What type of dogs are such dogs? Bloodhounds. This here's Nip and this here's Tuck. I thought so. Nip, Tuck, down. Meantime, I'll fix you all up some vittles. What does New York look like? You mean you've never been there? No, sir. I ain't never been out of the county. What do folks do up there? Oh, well, they, uh, well, they go to Madison Square Garden, and, uh, Belmont Racetrack, Mindy's Restaurant, Dave the Dude's Nightclub. Well, that's all. Sure does sound fine. Oh, land sakes, here I'm a-talking and y'all ain't eating. Emily Ann, how'd you like to go to New York? Oh, but what about my farm and all? Oh, forget it. Give it to Uncle Old Fella. It's not for a little doll like you. Oh, well, I hardly know y'all, and I just If I can't... say you'll be safe, you'll be safe. I'd just love to, Mr. Smithy, Mr. Jones. Oh, um, about that, uh, my name is really Foster. Robert Numbers Foster. He's Harry Pauly Samus. How you doing? Emily Ann. How do y'all? All of us want you to know that we're glad you're here and you're welcome to stay. Oh, thank you. I was getting powerful worried. We've got to figure something legitimate for you to do. Something that'll make you happy. Only it's got to be legal. Well, I can sew and cook. And I can chop wood and I plant cotton real good. Phil. Well, what about my dogs? They're awful good at hunting and treeing. I hired them out to the sheriff lots. Honey, I'm afraid you'll be out of work somewhat. Hey, didn't you say she can sing? Yeah, why not? Charlie! Hey, curtain time, Charlie! He'll train you, see? Then when you're ready, we clock you for the dude and you're off on a fast track. You want me numbers? Yeah. Meet Emily Ann Stackley, kid. I want you to dream up a classy act for her. She sing? Beautiful. And? I used to jig with my grandpa. Jig? Oh, no. That was a sample of just one of Damon Runyon's famous stories. Here now is the radio adaptation of the original story from the syndicated series called The Damon Runyon Theater, which first aired April 17th, 1949. The Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, The Bloodhounds of Broadway. 
And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. You know, at four in the morning along the main stem, one is apt to see many peculiar things. For example, it is about that time I am standing in front of Mindy's with regret the horse player. We are talking of things, mostly nothing, when we hear something happening at the curb. Oh, please, just a nightcap. I said no. It's early. It's only four. It is too late as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Clay. Good night. Oh, now, wait a minute, baby. I said good night. I guess she says good night, Broadway. She does it with a great deal of gusto. I do not blame her in the least. <laughs> regret? Who is the citizen she does not wish any more part of? Him? That is Marvin Clay. You know him. Oh, yeah. He has plenty of scratch. Yeah, from his father. Yeah, there is a guy like Marvin Clay who is loaded. Here is a guy like me who is the opposite. Will you take his money if you have to be him? Mm, yeah, that is something I do not care to offer an opinion on right now. Uh, uh, holy mackerel, Broadway, look at what is coming down this way. From where I am standing, it looks like a citizen leading two ponies. Broadway, those things are dogs. Dogs? I never see dogs that big. It must be glandular with them. Now, what do you suppose that strange-looking character is doing with dogs this hour of the morning? Well, we get our answer to that in a couple of seconds. Also, what happens with the dogs and regret and Marvin Clay is more than somewhat interesting because it includes the gendarmes, a shooting, and something that is strange indeed, which I will tell you about in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, The Bloodhounds of Broadway. Well, like I am saying, Regret spots the dogs and the character who leads them with two long ropes. They get up to us, and Regret says as follows. Hi there. Me? You talking to me? Uh-huh. Oh. Hi. Well, one thing about being up this early in the morning, the conversation is not long and dull. So long. Hey, hey, uh, w wait a minute. Me? Yeah, yeah, you. Uh, what are those dogs you have got there? Mine? Yeah, well, what kind are they? Bloodhounds. They have got ears like bedsheets. How old are they? Coming on three. The yellow ones nip and the brown ones tuck. Ah, three years old, huh? What's the matter with them? Nothing. Why? Well, they are very wrinkled. Nip there especially. He looks like he has many things on his mind. Yep. Ah, that's tuck. How are you, tuck? Uh, why, uh, why does he make that noise, huh? He smells food. He ain't at in two days. Well, then get him away from my legs. Nip's hungry, too. Come to think of it, so am I. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Wait. You mean these poor animals do not eat for two days? That's the size and passel of it, mister. I do not like to see animals suffer. What do they eat? Taint particular. Long as it'll taste something like food. Y Nip is looking at me. I, I do not like that. Won't hurt you none, mister. Less than you done something. They is man-tracking bloodhounds. Follow a man from one end of earth to the other. How do you like that? Gendarmes with fleas. Mm, uh, tell you what. I do not like to see animals suffer. Now, you bring them in Mindy's and I will set them up to some food. I'm hungry, too. Okay. Come on. Hey, wait a minute, Regret. You are not figuring to take them Shetland ponies in Mindy's. Why not? Guess it won't hurt them. Come on. Several sirloin steaks later, plus borscht, goulash, soup, and various other articles of food, John Wangle, it turns out this is the citizen's name, wipes his mouth on his sleeve and settles back. Nip and Tuck are full, too, and are now sleeping with their ears over their eyes. 
Wangle tells us how he happens to be in New York with man tracking bloodhounds from Georgia. Well, mister, I brung Nip and Tuck North with old time Uncle Tom's cabin show. Show went plum bust, and me and the dogs did too. First meal I had in two days. Why do you not go back to Georgia? Got no money. Would you ever think of selling the dogs? Sell Nip and Tuck? Not on your life, mister. They is the finest man-tracking hounds in the country. Is there very much of a market for that work? Nope. Is there nobody you are able to write to, a, a relative? Well, yep, my, my uncle's a sheriff. Uh. But I can't write. Uh. Come to think of it, wouldn't do me no good to write him anyway. Why not? He can't read. I see. Uh. Well, uh, uh, what do you plan to do, Mr. Wangle? I don't know. Make out best I can, I reckon. Yeah, I hate to see animals suffer. Tell you what, Mr. Wangle, you drop by here now and then. I'll take care of the food. That's right nice of you, mister. Maybe me and the dogs will be able to pay you back someday. That's Nip. Dreaming again. Dreaming of tracking somebody down. Hi, and uh, Nip. <laughs> uh, nice. Mister, if you ever need anybody tracked down, just call on me and Nip and Tuck. We'll find whoever you want, no matter where. Uh-huh. Meantime, uh, where do you live? Well, uh, we been staying at a public park north of here, but seeing as how Mr. Regret has taken an interest, I figure maybe moving in closer to town will be just about right. So, Regret, because he is very soft-hearted about animals, takes the bloodhounds under his wing. But it seems that now he has to take the grub out on the sidewalk because Mindy objects. Naturally, Nip and Tuck grow very fond of Regret. So does John Wangle, because all three of them are beginning to fat up very nicely. In fact, in several days, the bloodhounds' ribs become practically invisible, where before they stick out like bones on a well-picked heron. Then, it comes up one night... And I am with regret in the 300 Club, where the scene is as follows. <laughs> now I ask you, Broadway, this is the life, huh? It is all right. Wonderful music, beautiful dolls. Yeah, speaking of dolls, is that not Miss Lovey Lou sitting over there? Huh? Yeah, yeah, it is. And soak me for a herring if she is not with Marvin Clay. Broadway, it burns me when I think of a very nice star like Lovey Lou being with a heel like Marvin Clay. Well, he is a very well-heeled heel. Uh, Miss Lovey Lou is not one to overlook fine points like that. I will thank you not to talk about Lovey in that manner. Oh, ho, ho. it seems like you take an interest in her. I am interested, yes. I am interested. What is happening over there? It seems to me that Marvin Clay wants to dance without getting up. Why, the... Dirty... I'm going to put a stop to it. It is none of your business, Regret. I'll make it mine. Do not be a sap. I'm going to smash his ever-loving face into pieces. Come on. Regret, do not bother yourself. It is no bother. It is more like a play. You will be bounced out of here. Please behave yourself. Oh, now, Take your hands off Miss Lovey Lou. Ah, who the devil are you? Take your hands off her. That's what I keep telling him. I will give you a split second to unhand her. <laughs> Go away, you idiot. Mr. Clay, I am going to unhinge your head from the rest of you. Oh, you, you dare? And I'll have you thrown into jail so fast. You, you have... asked for it, Mr. Clay. Oh. 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 Hey, what's going on? I'll get you for this, you, you top. Get up and get out of here, fast. Go on. You heard what the man said. Do you hear about this? Yeah. Come on, lovey Lou. It's all right, everyone. Just a little accident. That is all. Regret? That was wonderful. Oh, it is nothing, lovey. Any time at all. Regret? I think you are in trouble. Me? Why? Marvin Clay is not the kind of a citizen who will take this laying down. Uh, then I will see that he lays down. Huh. Meanwhile, I have a dance with Miss Lovey Lou. How about it, lovey? I think that'll be just lovey. It will be just lovey, she says. And it is. It seems regret falls for Miss Lovey Lou. And for the next week, he sees a great deal of her. In fact, he cannot miss, because she is in the floor show at the 300 Club, 
and one is able to see a great deal of all the dolls there. Anyway, it seems he forgets all about John Wangle and Nip and Tuck for some days. Then it comes up one morning, and I am again standing in front of Mindy's at about 4 a.m., when I see somebody coming toward me. And who is it but a police inspector by the name of McNamara? And he says to me... Ah, morning, Broadway. Good morning, Mac. What brings you out before the sun? Trouble, trouble, nothing but trouble. What is this particular trouble? Looking for a friend of yours. That gives you trouble? In this case, yeah. Broadway, where's regret? Regret? Why, I, I, I do not see him for almost a week. In fact, it is about a week. Sure. Sure. Well, I guess you're telling the truth. Is there uh, any particular reason you are out this early looking for regret? Well, yeah, I guess you could call it a particular reason. I see. Like I say, I, I do not see him. Yeah, like you say. I uh, guess I got a tramp all over town together. Oh, he could be in any one of several hundred places. But uh, you do not yet tell me why you look for him. You know Marvin Clay? I uh, hear of him, yeah, but I am not on speaking terms. Have a fight? No, I just do not know him well enough. I see. How about regret? Regret? You remember regret. We just talked about him a couple of seconds ago. What about him and Marvin Clay? Well, it seems that regret and Clay had a few words about a week ago. And uh, from what I heard, regret gave Clay five fingers in a knot. So? So about an hour ago, I got a call to see a man who was shot. Shot? With a gun? It seems reasonable to draw that conclusion. Seeing as how there were some holes in Mr. Marvin Clay. Clay? And, and, and regret? I got to ask regret a few questions, and I... What is a steamboat doing up this far? Uh, those are dogs. Uh, bloodhounds. Holy cats, look at the size of them. Morning, Broadway. Take it easy, Nip. Now, settle down, Tuck. Settle down. Get those horses off the side. Yeah, yeah, you, you better run along, Wangle. Uh, he ain't here again, huh? No, no, he is not here. But he will be late. And then I run along. Here, here, take this bob and buy something. We sure miss regret. Regret? Regret the horse player? Best friend man a dog ever had. Wait a minute. You know regret? Uh, just slightly, Inspector. The, the, the dogs have a, a sniff in the quaint. Shut up, Broadway. Uh, you... What's your name? Wangle. Why? These are uh, bloodhounds, aren't they? Best man trackers in the whole world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now, now run along, Wangle. I told you to shut up. Uh, Wangle, these dogs know regret pretty well. Why, I reckon Nip and Tuck could sniff out regret from all the people in the whole world. Uh, and uh, just suppose, uh, suppose regret had been someplace and had gone. Could these dogs track them down? Mister, even if the trail's more than a day old, they can do it. Okay. Here's where I save some legwork. Come along. Where to? You want to find regret, right? Wangle, do not listen Shut to Shut up. This. How about it, Wangle? Mister, you could just show Nip and Tuck where regret was last, and they'll get to him in no time at all. is that. I figure regret is cooked. And what comes after is something that the main stem will never forget. And how it ends is quite a story, which I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story... The Bloodhounds of Broadway. Well, there we go, off into the cold gray morning. McNamara has it no other way than I go along. I do not know why, but there I am at 4.15 a.m., tearing along behind Nip and Tuck, who are taken to the scene of the shooting. They sniff around, then both of them put out about a yard of tongue, dig in, and the next thing I know, we are a sight to behold indeed. 
Nip and Tuck are leading. Behind them is John Wangle holding the lead ropes. Then comes Inspector McNamara. And then me, followed by ten gendarmes. Hey! Hey, Wangle! Slow him down a little. Mister, when Nip and Tuck are after somebody, they go like grease lightning. Poor regret. And after all he does for those flea circuses. Yeah, saves me plenty of legwork. Wango, sure those dogs are going in the right direction? Mister, they ain't never made no mistake in their whole life. If Mr. Regret went this way, they know it. If it is all the same to you, Mac, I will get off here. You're going along, Broadway. You're going to help me find it. Hey, hey, they stop, mister. This is where Mr. Regret is. Why? This is nothing but an old garage. Can't have it, mister. Nip and Tuck know this is where he is. Well, quiet him down. Sure, Nip, Tuck. Quiet now, quiet now. Easy now. Easy. What is Regret doing in this old garage? What do you think? Hiding out. Boys, spread out. Kelly, Rabinowitz, get around to the back. Burton, take three men, cover the sides of this place. Rest of you back me up when I go in the front here. Where do you want me, Mac? Home? Keep off to one side. Regret's got a rod. Now, careful, boys. You're going in after a desperate man. All right? Take off. Okay. Here we go, boys. Wolf, kick open that door. If it ain't open, shoot it open. All right, Regret, get covered. Cut the gun. Stand where you are. Stand still, every last man of you. Well, well, well. A crap game. Maybe you guys ain't read the law about it. But, but where is Regret? Mister, Mister Nip and Tuck want to get going again. Mister Regret ain't here, but he was. Yeah. Okay, we'll go in a minute. First, I want to take down some names of certain citizens who are breaking the law by shooting craps. Line up. Line up and give your right names. Well, McNamara makes this haul, and we take off again with Nip and Tuck leading the way. They make stop after stop. By this time, there is quite a crowd following, because it is by no means a usual thing to see a troop of gendarmes chasing after two bloodhounds who have got their bellies close to the pavement. Every now and then, the dogs let loose with those loud wails, and the result is a lot of citizens hurt themselves leaping from windows and fire escapes, figuring somebody's after them. Then, Nip and Tuck make another stop, and the scene is as follows. Look, Wangle, this is the 18th stop we've made. Where is Regret? I can't help it, mister. Every place Nip and Tuck stop, Regret was there. He is quite busy. So far, we break up three crap games, two poker parties, various and sundry other illegal enterprises, and etc. Wangle, these dogs are nothing but stool pigeons. I can't help it, Mr. Broadway. I go where Nip and Tuck go. All right, Wangle. We'll try this joint. Hey, wait a minute. This is no joint. This is where Miss Maud Milligan lives. So? She is Big Sam's friend. And I wish no part of being any place that Big Sam might be. We're going in. All right, boys. Once more, this may be it. Spread out. Your gendarmes are becoming pretty tired, man. Oh, shut up. All right, Wolf. Give the buzzer a punch. Yeah, who is it? Open up, Maud. Inspector McNamara. Hey, what's the idea? Waking me up in the middle of the night. Open up or we'll break the door in. Take that chain off. Ready, boys. All right, Wangle. Let him loose. <laughs> ah, elephants! Wangle, oh. Wangle, quiet him down. Oh, Get him quiet. Nip, talk down now, down. Settle down, boys. Settle well, those down. ain't no things to scare a girl with at five in the morning. You get him out of here. Where is he, Maud? You get him out... Huh? Who? Quit stalling. I want regret. Are you... Are you kidding? Oh, I ain't heard nothing like that in my whole life. And he's looking at me. Listen, Maud, I want regret. Yes, he ain't here either, mister. What? Listen, Wangle. I can't help it. But they want to get going. Come on. Well, then you let them. And you, McNamara, I'm going to see my alderman, the mayor, and, and maybe the governor about this. No, You've got Ma- no right breaking in here and making a zoo out of my apartment. Look, I'm going to I- sue you. I'll have you thrown off the force. I'll see the newspaper oh, boys Ma- and tell them how you go around with... with 
Will somebody tell me what they are? Bloodhounds, Maud. Well, I ain't Eliza, and I ain't never been an ice skater. Now get out. All right, all right, Maud, all right. Don't get sore. Just a mistake. Well, don't you ever make another one like it. Well, McNamara gets out. So do Nip and Tuck. By this time, McNamara is no dog lover, and I know he never will be. But he gives Wangle one more chance to find regret or get thrown in the tank for obstructing justice. So off we go again, and we end up at the Club 300. And this time, it is the end of the trail. Because sitting over the table with Miss Lovey Lou is nobody but regret. Nip and Tuck take one look, and before anybody knows what happens, they are across the floor and practically in his lap, licking his face. <laughs> Mac is right after them. There he is, boys. Get him. Hey, what is going on? Oh, look. The mental bar's going from life. Hey, Wango, call him off. Get him away from me. And all this comes from being kind to animals. Oh, they're just barring with Wango, get him away from him. Get him away. I'm going to be alive for the shooting of Marvin Clay. No. Wango, do something. I can't see regret. Get him away. No. Don't let them take him, Broadway. If you are able to think of how I can stop 11 coppers, do so now or forever hold your peace. Oh, it's all my fault. It's all my fault. Maybe so, but it is too late to think about it now. You, you don't understand, Broadway. Regret didn't shoot Marvin Clay. I did. Oh, shoot. Huh? Listen, come over away from this real fast. Come on. Now, what is this you say? It's true. It's true he's a healer. Maybe so. But there is a law against shooting even heels. What'll they do to regret? Does regret know you shoot Clay? No. What'll they do to regret? What do you think? Broadway, it was an accident. I swear it was an accident. I found out he was going out with my baby sister. And... I never know you have one. I do. I went to see Marvin Clay. He laughed. He took a gun out of a drawer and said I had to get out. And I got mad. I, I slapped him and there was a fight. The gun went off. Yeah, I see. But what about regret? Broadway, I'll... I'll tell him what really happened. Then you better hurry up before one of two things happens. Either he is taken to the pokey, or he is swallowed by those dogs. <laughs> well, a few minutes later, they untangle regret from Nip and Tuck. By this time, he is pretty done in. But Wangle says the dogs are just playing. Now, this is not the end of the story. In fact, there is quite a bit more, and I will tell you the payoff in just a minute. Well, like I say, regret is untangled from the door. McNamara arrests, but... uh, Miss Lovey Lou comes forward with her story. The upshot is the whole bunch are taken to headquarters, including me. Well, of course, I am released because I am just an innocent bystander. Well, it is two days after all this that I am sitting in Mindy's when in comes Regret, all dressed up, and he has two suitcases with him. He sits down and says, Hello, Broadway. Regret, I am glad to see you. Uh, yeah, I, uh... I am leaving town, Broadway. I see you are carrying suitcases. And it seems to me you look more than somewhat nervous. Uh Uh-huh. I, uh, I'm just killing time before I leave. Uh, uh, How does the whole thing turn out, Regret? Oh, all right. Yeah, I I hear that Marvin Clay is not dead. Also that he does not prosecute Miss Lovey Lou. Uh, Yeah, that is correct. Because he does not want unfavorable publicity. Sure, sure. Uh, By the way... Uh, what becomes of Wangle and, and Nip and Tuck? Oh, they are ingrates. But they are sent back to Georgia. It seems some of the boys take up a collection which sets them up for life. Because they are very dangerous to have around here. They get plenty of people in trouble the night they look for me. Yeah, they do. I can see why uh, certain citizens would rather take chances with the gendarmes than with Nip and Tuck. <laughs> exactly. So, I am leaving town for a while. Oh, you and Miss Lovey Lou are going on a honeymoon? Uh Uh-uh. I am through with Miss Lovey Lou. What? But she saves you from trouble. You know she does not have to say anything. You are the logical suspect for the gendarmes to call her. And it would be tough for you. I know. But I do not like to be married to any doll who handles a rascal. Even by accident. 
think what would happen. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, well, then, why are you leaving town? Broadway, what is the last stop Nip and Tuck make before they find me? Uh, crab game, the poker... Oh, oh, Maud Milligan's place. Uh-huh. Well, Big Sam is out of town at the time. But I hear he is coming back. Now I am going to leave town for a while because maybe if he hears about Nip and Tuck going to Maud's place, Big Sam might get the wrong idea. Goodbye, Broadway. And so ends The Bloodhounds of Broadway, another of the famous stories. Our opening music was I Surrender, Dear by Madonna from the movie Bloodhounds of Broadway based on the story by Damon Runyon. In 1949, the Damon Runyon Theater, with John Brown as Broadway, was directed by Richard Sandville, and the stories were adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Bern Karstensen was in charge of production for Mayfair Syndication. John Henderson speaking. (laughs) 